All right, The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks, DigiKey and Lady Ada. Lady Ada is going to use her powers of engineering and procuring parts for 15 plus years and using DigiKey site to show you how to find what you're looking for. Yes. What are you going to look for this week? Okay, so um, as we were mentioning, um, due to this you know, post recession boom in components, um, a lot of components that were hard to find and now impossible to find, some that were easy to find and now impossible to find. It's just, it's just everything is very long lead time. Um, a lot of parts are evaporating, as I like to say, they, they're, they're being gobbled up. Um, so one of the components that we've used a lot of and had no, even though it's not recommended for new designs and R&D, we were, we're still, we were able to get large quantities, no problem. The lead time was a little long, but like you could still get tons of them. And then like this week, they just completely disappeared because I think this part was used by other people. They really needed it, um, and so they, they purchased it up. So this was the part that I like to use. This is the APX803-26SAG. Uh, so the APX803 part, uh, this is a, a simple reset supervisor. So what it does is when you plug in power, and this is, you know, people who do electronics, you know, once you, once you get past uh, just using modules together, you'll, you'll quickly hit this. If you power up um, some circuitry in each one, it, t it turns on at different times, as, you know, based on the, when the voltage rises past the, the turn on voltage for that component. You can get components that like the microcontroller has started up, but the display hasn't, or the display has and the microcontroller hasn't. And it needs to be like, you know, usually this is why you have a reset for um, your sensors or displays or, or peripherals, where you actually like pull the reset pin low on after the microcontroller or microprocessor has booted to really like make sure everything is reset and comes up together at the same time with like fully clean um, reset values. But um, for us, because we're using a lot of modules that you know beginners are using, they sometimes don't connect the reset pin or they don't want to connect the reset pin or they forget to toggle it or, or whatever. And so we'll add auto reset circuitry um, and what that will do is make sure that when it's plugged in, the, you know, the, the component itself will not power up until, it won't come out of reset until power has reached a certain level. So it just means you get a, a much better experience. Um, you're less likely to have like flaky, you know, confusing um, uh, responses with your peripherals. So let's um, go to the overhead real fast and I can, I can actually show a component in question. So this is a uh, display module. So this is like a, you know, a, a, a TFT display breakout. And um, I have level shifting here is that APX 803. So what this does is that when you power this TFT, it'll perform a hard reset and hold the reset low until the power gets up to about 2.7 volts and then it'll hold the reset for a little bit longer and then release it, um, just making sure that the TFT really comes up uh, very cleanly. Otherwise you can get like, again, flaky behavior, you think it's responding, it's not really, um, you know, has old values from, you know, when it was previously powered on or they're corrupted a little bit. And if, you know, there's a reset pin, um, but if you don't actually perform the, the hard reset, this chip will do that favor for you. So they're lovely little chips and they're pennies, right? They're not very expensive. Um, I love to sprinkle them on displays, especially. I found that they've uh, give a much better experience to users. Uh, so back to the uh, computer. Um, so the APX 803, like I said, I was able to get it. Now I can't. Uh, and also the lead time is 43 weeks, right? I mean, like, I don't even know what's going to be going on in 43 weeks. That's, that's moved to Mars by then. I know. It's ridiculous. But what's cool is you can see like they're, they're inexpensive, you know, for, for 10 cents or so, you can have one of these um, auto reset supervisors. I just really love them. So let's find an alternative. Now this was, uh, again, this is not for new designs, um, but I really, I was able to get this, no problem. This part, I've been using this for years and there's been always plenty. And then, you know, recession ended or post pandemic ended and these were all swept up and I was like, you know what, now's a good time to find a replacement. So I'm going to use the product attributes here to find a, a good alternative. So I don't care who the manufacturer is, so I'm not going to click that. Um, I don't really care about the packaging yet. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Obviously, I don't want it to be not for new designs. I want active. I do want it to be the same sort of thing, a simple reset power on reset. 
I want it to be open drain or open collector. What that means is, yes, you know, they, it can reset um, the microcontroller. Actually, it's interesting. The um, the IMX RT board. I also have also the 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 IMX RT 1011 microcontroller board. I'm designing this microcontroller in the data sheet, um, like the app note for like minimal schematic. It also recommends to have an auto reset circuit. So it's the same same chip used here. Again, I really like this chip. Um, using a lot of designs in mind. Uh, so I want open collector because um, that way I can also have a reset button. Or if I do want to have a reset control, I'm not going to have like two, you know, signals fighting each other. It's like this will hold it low, but then if I have a reset button that pushes the reset pin low, that's that's also okay. So let's do open collector. Active low, that means when I want to be in reset, I keep it low. Um, so for this chip, the reset timeout is 140 milliseconds and the voltage threshold is 2.63 volts. I'm not going to click those because again, I don't care if it's 130 millisecond, 140, 150. The voltage, I don't care if it's 2.5 or 2.7. I just need it to be around that number, right? So I don't want to be too picky. I don't pick those. I do want to have the same package, uh, SOP233. I really would like it to be drop and replacement. Um, and I only want to uh, monitor one voltage. Okay, so let's look at what's available. Um, so here, uh, you know, now I'm in the, the normal search. I'm going to have my classic only search for active and only normal stocking. Why not, you know, in stock? Because there's a lot of stuff that isn't in stock right now that like might be soon. Again, stock numbers are like so, so confusing and weird right now um, that I have some APX 803 in stock. I'm good for like a month or two. But if that lead time is four or three weeks, I, I will run out before my back order gets fulfilled. So I just want something that is like is likely to come into stock in the next few weeks or few months. Okay. Um, so the reset timeout, again, uh, the one that I had was 140. You know, I think anything between, you know, 120 to 150 is fine. It, it doesn't. For my purposes, it doesn't really matter as long as it's held down for about 100 milliseconds. Maybe I'll pick even 100 milliseconds. Okay, so that's good. Um, then the voltage threshold. So remember, the one I had was 2.63, and the reason I don't want to be picky is you can see there's 2.625, there's 2.63, there's 2.64, 2.7. All these are like pretty much okay. So I'm going to pick like 2.625 up to like 2.9 because everything I'm using is like basically 3.3 volts and so as it rises I want I want this to turn on a little bit before the 3.3 volts and also you know if the voltage is a little bit low I don't want it to kick in by accident so you know maybe maybe something like that okay so let's apply okay great um so we're already starting to see like ooh, these look good yeah, these are slot 23s looking nice um I can start scrolling here. So what's nice is, you know, a lot of these, there's, there's stock. These, you know, there's a couple thousand stock. This one has 33,000. So the, you know, I am a little price sensitive. Um, I, I, I sprinkle these on board, so I want something inexpensive. So I'm going to view the prices at about a reel. And a reel of parts is, is 5,000. So I'm going to do that. And then um, sort by price, and I'm going to see... Uh, these TI parts, uh, the TLV803 EA two, you know, 26s, so those came up. Um, I'm already feeling really good about this. Why? Because I, you know, my part was the APX803 and this is the TLV803. I always love it when the part I'm looking for has the same like number in it because that gives me a hint that like they're they're designed to be cross compatible. Just one is uses the TI prefix TLV and the other one uses the the diodes prefix APX. So the next thing you have to watch for is, um, like many chips, I'm, I, you know, especially the low cost ones, they often come in multiple package formats that have the same part number, which is like so tricky. Um, and this is one of the, the part, luckily I remember this from when I first spec the APX803. So let me look up, I have the data sheet for the APX803. So you pull it up. See, so not remain of new designs. Okay. They actually recommend using the 803S, which is also out of stock. But Or maybe it's the, um, i trying to remember, maybe it was a BGA part. I don't remember. So there are two packages here. There's this part, with the, and they're both SOT23. One is the SA package, 
which has ground reset VCC, and then the SR package, which has reset ground VCC. Why would you do such a thing? I mean, it's probably like this was replacement for something else. Maybe they had a customer who was like, you know, I really need to have this particular pinout. I, there, there's some reason, but basically you have to watch out because if you get the wrong one, you're going to be like very unhappy. This chip is not going to do what you think it's going to do. I don't even know what it would do. You just get very confused. So it'll be trying to pull ground down or like reset up. Who knows? But the one that we are replacing is the SA package, right? So it's SOT23 SAG, um, which means we want ground reset VCC. Okay, cool. So now when we go back here, um, we want to look at the data sheet for the TLV803, which I already downloaded. And um, you'll note that they also have like, you know, various packages, they have various types. Um, this is the, the topology, this is, you know, what it does, is it push, pull, open, drain, active high. So, you know, yes, we want the 803, we got that, there's multiple voltages, cool, we got the one we wanted. And then, yeah, there's different packages with which one is reset. So let's, let's scroll down and see if we can find the, okay, they have like eight packages, too many packages. So for this one, um, we want the one that matches this. So ground reset VCC, uh, ground reset VDD. And we want not the SC70, but the SOT23. So this one, ground reset. Oh, and there's like a third one. Wow. They went the other way too. They're like, we'll, we'll flip it around anyway. I don't know. Maybe it's a, again, a replacement for some other part that has a, a different pinout. So we want the DBZ package, the Dragon Ball Z package. Cool. And uh, this is the R pinout. So we want the non-R. And so if you look here, it's a little, maybe I'll zoom in. You can see this is the R. It has the R in that part number, and this one doesn't. This is the one we want. Yes, TLVEA26 Dragon Ball Z. Not R. Confusing because this has R in the part number, but that's for tape and wheel. I'm pretty sure this is the right one. But I'm still going to get samples anyways to try because if this, I think this is very... Oh, wait, sorry. I clicked the wrong thing. I meant... Hold on. See, I was confused. One second. I'm going to find... <clears throat> I want the TLV... Yeah, sorry. It's the 26R DBZR. And this is the 26 dbzr. This is correct because there's an R but an N but not after the 26. So I did I did get it correct. Very tricky. Watch out. This I have been um, fooled multiple times by multi package parts with different pins. In fact, even today, you know, looking at the um, resistive touch controller, I was looking at the pinouts for the QFN and the TSOP part were different. I I really wish everybody would just sort of stick to one um, pinout, but they just don't. So I'm still going to get some samples of this. Make sure that it's the right one because I'm paranoid. Um, but now at least I have a drop-in alternative for that APX803. So um, good news is uh, I will be able to keep manufacturing um, all the parts that use uh, the APX803 just by dropping in this component after I test it and verify that it's a drop-in replacement. Yay! We'll be doing this for the next six to nine months. And that's a great search for this week. Where is